What is up, watch people? Welcome to another edition of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I am just sitting outside next to Warner Brothers because uh, this is my neighborhood. So I figured I would just uh, chill out for a minute. I'm wearing my Omega Seamaster 300M. And today we're going to be talking about Frederick Constant versus Patek Philippe Vacheron Constantin. Um, so enjoy the video and uh, let's roll the intro. All right, thanks. What is up? All right, so uh, let's talk about Frederick Constant. Let's talk about Patek Philippe Calatrava and Vacheron Constantin uh, Patrimony. Um, Frederick Constant, first and foremost, uh, <clears throat> was started in 1988 by, I think, uh, Peter Stas, S-T-A-S. I'm going to put their information up here. Um, and his wife, Alexandria Grambell or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember her name. Now, I'm going based off memory. Honestly, I didn't do any research on this because I, I have owned several Fre Frederick Constants and I did my research way back. I, I no longer own a Frederick Constant, but um, I did at uh, one time on both of the watches that we're going to talk about, and I will show you pictures too. Um, Frederick Constant's first series or first line of watches came out in 1992, and with Swiss movements. What it was was uh, the owners, Peter Stas and his wife, um, I, they, they were shopping, watch shopping in, in Geneva, and they just, the, the prices of some of these watches were just astronomical, ridiculous. So they decided to start a watch company that would be more of affordable luxury. And they succeeded in that, doing it very well. A um, couple things that I like about them and then what I don't like about them. Uh, what I like about them is they came out with watches that looked almost identical. Um, so if we have the uh, identical to Patek Philippe and, and Vacheron, so it, it was clear that they were literally just ripping them off. Um, so we have the uh, the Patek Philippe 5227G 52, um, versus the uh, Frederick Constant Index Classics. And then the Vacheron Constantine Patrimony versus the Frederick Constant Slimline. Um, and the Patrimony, I don't know the reference number on that. Re their reference number is really long, so it was just one of those things. It's the Patrimony. Um, and you'll see in the photos how close they look, how similar they are. Um, Frederick Constant, uh, the watches are, are beautiful. I mean, no doubt they're beautiful. They're under $1,000 for these two models. Um, and I think what they're really for is people that really admire the luxury of a Patek or a Vacheron, but can't either simply afford a Patek or a Vacheron or simply justify spending the money on getting one of those watches. And they're quite content getting something that looks very similar, just as such as like with any other watch that's an homage, 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 homage watch. Uh, like with the Rolex Sub, you know, there's so many other variants of watches that mimic the Sub that people have no problem wearing. I mean, it's the most copied dive watch on the planet, right? Um, and that's the whole thing. A lot of these watches that, you know, like the integrated bracelets with, uh, you know, the Audemars Piguet, the Vacheron, um, the Pateks, all that stuff, you know, everything has its thing, right? So um, basically, these two watches mimic the Patek Philippe Calatrava and the Patrimony. Um, now, I have not owned a Vacheron Constantin Patrimony, but I have owned a Vacheron Constantin Regulator. Um, and of course, you can't really compare the two with the quality because that's, they're the, you know, holy trinity. But, but the, Pate, uh, but the uh, Frederick Constants are very comfortable, they're very reliable, and their movements are workhorses. I you think they use in both of those would be the FC303, uh, movement, um, which is basically either an Edo or Salida based movement. However, Frederick Constant has moved on and created uh, their own in house calibers and they're doing it very well. Uh, some of their watches, the things I don't like about them is any watch that they make, they like they'll have a, a, 
I don't want to say it's a minute repeater uh, world timer um, that's like ten thousand dollars but it's gold plated it's not solid gold would you spend ten grand on a, on a, on a gold plated watch no I certainly would not um, and the other thing with Frederick Constant they're, they're kind of all over the place place with their prices and, and watches they have quartz models you can get them on Amazon for like two three hundred dollars for you know they look nice though I mean they do look nice so if you're looking just for a nice piece to wear and you're not concerned with the branding I mean it's it's they're they're fun and they're great watches um, however uh, as comparing the two you know I would much rather have a Patek or the Vacheron over those but they are great alternatives so having said that um, this particular video, really, I just wanted to iterate that, that uh, reiterate that, that Frederick Constant are really a great brand. Uh, they were bought out by Citizen, so whatever is going to hold in the future for them, I don't know. Um, they are made in Geneva. Uh, they're a great value for money, like incredible value for money, actually. Um, so, and I might even pick one up again one day. I don't know. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, it's a great brand for people that really just either again can't afford the Patek or Vacheron uh, or just simply don't care and they just want something stylish and luxurious that uh, plays the part they certainly could sell them for a lot more than I say a lot more they could sell them for quite a bit more than than what they're going for and in fact they've gone up you know on Amazon you see them for under a thousand bucks um, but I think I paid for mine um, I think on the uh, classics the uh, Calatrava uh, copy. Uh, I think I paid around five hundred, six hundred dollars for it, and then the slimline. I think I paid about a thousand bucks for it. So, having said that, um, just wanted to give a shout out to them. They're they're a great brand. Um, I I think they get some credit, but they're really kind of still not considered. You know, quite really there. You know, they, I think they 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 still need things to figure out. You know, use use uh, solid gold. You know, you know get rid of some of these cheap quartz ones that you have. I mean, it's nothing wrong with selling quartz watches, but man, just, I don't know, figure out what you're going to do, your marketing, and, and, and just take it from there. Other than that, I guess that's all I got to say. So, um, peace out, cheers, and thanks again to everyone who watches my videos, everyone who likes and subscribes. You guys are awesome, and I appreciate all the comments, and take care.